discussion on uh, nature and characteristics of management so we have seen uh, what is the definition and what are the importance of management now let us see what are the nature and characteristics of it so there are many natures available with respect to the syllabus and the prescribed textbook but considering the examination point of view and considering our uh, course of study that is a bachelor of uh, engineering it is not necessary for us to discuss in depth all the 25 natures or characteristics of a management so that is why we are restricting our uh, scope of discussion to the best eight nature and characteristic among that first one management is goal oriented so what does it mean any organization maybe it is a school or maybe it is a college or maybe it is a business organization they will have a predefined goals that with respect to the end of the academic year or with respect to the end of the financial year certain things should be achieved so certain goals will be set well in advance and thus we can say that management is goal oriented second one is management is universal this is applicable everywhere whatever we consider any organization whether it is a profit organization non profit organization whether it is a business organization maybe it is a bank or maybe it is a manufacturing industry or maybe it is a training company whatever you consider management is visibly or invisibly present everywhere so that is why we say that it is present everywhere so we can say that management is universal coming to the third point that is it is a integrative force now one person cannot manage all the things in an organization there will be different roles played by different people and different things will be done by different teams now the collective opinion of these teams and these uh, people who are individually playing their roles the, they have to report to their higher authorities maybe a manager and manager will collectively gather all the information from these people or from these departments or from these sectors and thus integrate all the people of the organization together working towards the common goal of the organization that is to be achieved so that is why we say that management is a integrative force next it is a social process now as we know that human beings are called as social animals this involves in managing human resource as well as other resources the most important here is we are discussing that is about managing the human resource thus we have to see what are the requirements of the employee within the organization and outside the organization and thus we have to achieve the goal of the organization by pleasing the employee making sure that happy index of the employee is maintained very well so thus it involves i mean managing the human resources that is why we call that management is a social process it is multidisciplinary so we can see that management is multidisciplinary it is not just restricted to one particular wing of a organization or one particular sector of a organization maybe there are several departments in a manufacturing plant and each department has to be managed individually and the department heads have to be managed at the central level so there are different people representing different departments and these representatives will have to be managed by some higher authority and that person has to be managed by some other higher authority thus even though there are multiple disciplines with respect to the uh, organization they have been collectively managed together i it is applicable to almost all the organization thus we say that management is multidisciplinary coming to the next point that is management is a continuous process now let us say that we are setting a goal in the beginning of a academic year or a financial year we are planning how that goal is to be achieved then we organize uh, the resources required to it then the managers will guide or direct the people that is what we call it as uh, actuating it then we control the entire process making sure that it is uh, flowing or not and then we achieve the goal 
Now the process does not end here. What happens is once a goal is achieved, we will set up another goal or we will go one step higher in achieving further success. And once again, the process has to be repeated and it is a never ending process. That is why we call management is a continuous process. Management is intangible. Intangible means it is present, but it cannot be felt or seen. It is something like a supernatural. It is present, it cannot be felt or it cannot be seen. So it is an invisible force that is acting on us. Even though there are no managers in certain organizations or startup, things will happen on its own and people will have to manage. So here in such cases, the management is intangible or we can say that it is not visible or it cannot be felt but it is present so such characteristic we call it as a intangible next one is it is an art as well as science so there will be certain technical things that has to be managed maybe we have to analyze certain things or maybe we have to predict certain things so these things can come under the category of science and also not just having the knowledge is sufficient we have to apply the knowledge wherever necessary so this skill is required so that is why it is called as management is an art so these are the eight important nature or the characteristics of management so next we shall have a look at functions of management so now we know what are its nature we can have a look at it the functions of the management so let us say it one by one the first function of any management is planning after that it is organizing then it is directing then controlling innovating and representing so these are the six important functions of any management by the definition of the management we know that it is an art of getting things done to people or it is a process involving planning organizing directing and actuating so in order to complete those processes these are the six functions that any management has to do the process may vary from different organization but the background structure remains same and that is how it is so first one is planning so planning means what and how the things should be done so first we need to know what is to be done we have to decide whether it is possible or not then we have to form a strategy to it on how exactly it is to be done so this step is called as planning second one that is organizing so raw materials other tools what are the capital different types of department grouping of staffs sharing the responsibility and uh, assigning the rules monitoring the progress of the work all these things we call it as organizing so things have once it is planned and we know how it is to be done we should allocate it who should do what particular work in the organization everybody cannot do all the work so we have to identify what are their specialities and give them the work appropriately so this particular task or the function we call it as organizing third one is directing so there will be some superiors and there will be some uh, laymen's in the organization who are uh, qualified to the do the respective tasks so with respect to that the leaders or the managers what we call they have to lead the team they have to motivate their subordinates and also we have to make sure that things are going smooth and swift as per the plan so this particular function we call it as directing the next function what we are going to discuss is controlling so if it is a manufacturing industry there will be certain standards predefined for any product depending on the country or the continent there will be certain predefined standards and we have to make sure that our product is meeting those standards otherwise uh, there are very less chances that the society will accept your product because it is not as per the standard so we have to make sure that whatever the organization is giving as a product or a service it is as per the standards and we have to make sure that it is required for the people so this is where the controlling part comes each and every step we have to check the progress properly and we have to make sure that we are going as per the plan and if there is any mistake we have to rectify it that is called as action taking 
and thus it has to go on continuously next is innovating so in any organization the innovation is a key part which is required to grow big there is a wonderful saying that either you innovate or you will evaporate so if there is no innovation then there can be seen a drastic downfall in any organization so innovation is a important key factor in any organization the last function of management is representing so this is effectively managing the social impact so there will be certain social responsibilities of any organization and you have to make sure that if these things are not maintained properly it can affect the organization in a very adverse way so that is why we say that it is necessary to effectively manage the social impact what an organization doing for the society and how the society is having a feeling about that particular organization these things are very very important with respect to the functions of management so these are the six functions so now this is a circular process or we can say that it is a continuous process like first we have to plan the things then we have to organize we have to allocate the resources properly and then after that we have the leaders have to direct the subordinates on how the work has to be done or if there is some expert and if there is a trainee then that expert has to help that trainee in order to fulfill the organization goal and there will be a controlling process where we have to see that things are happening as per plan or the product is being manufactured as per the standards after that we have to keep on innovating the things we cannot stop here we have to keep on innovating the things for the growth of the organization and we have to maintain the social responsibility or the social impact properly so these are the functions of the management so that's all we have got in this particular lecture